Hello and welcome to another How to Play video by Pikiboard Gamer. My name is Hector Rakos and in today's video I will explain how you can play Lands of Galzer, designed by Sami Laxo and Seppo Kukas Jarvi. The game has the great quality of Snowdale design. Let's start with a quick overview and then we continue with the rules of the game. Lands of Galzer is a story-driven adventure game where you explore a lively, open and adventure-filled world. Players are adventurers with the goal of earning prestige. In this game, time never ends with every game representing a month of a year. At the end of every game, the adventurers and the world status is saved to continue in the next game. Into this world, players will be traveling to locations, picking up quests, buying and selling valuable items, or even finding companions that will follow them. On every one of their turns, players will be resolving an event scene, making crucial decisions and testing their skills. Results of these events not only could affect the players, but also the status of the world. At the end of the game, the most prestigious adventurers will win in the lands of Galzer. To play the game, you will need to install the Book of Adventures by navigating to the web address that I show you from your PC, phone or tablet. Before your first game, first take the adventurer boards, set their skills exactly as I show you and adjust their dials to 10 gold. Then take all cards in the game and place them in numerical order using one of the two trays and the number dividers. Place the cards in the tray in a way so that the card's number is facing you. This will make it much easier each time you are trying to find the specific card. You have just created your library. Next, take the purple quest divider and place it in front of your library. Find cards 127 to 148, shuffle them and place them behind the purple divider. Then take the black vault divider and place it right at the end of your library. Then take cards 296 to 299 and place them right behind the vault without changing their order. Then take the second tray and place the teal dividers. There's one teal divider for every adventurer and one global divider to form your global slot. Then find the four zero cards and the four 111 cards. Each adventurer has a card from each set. Take the two cards of each adventurer and place them behind the corresponding adventurer's divider. Then take the d12 die, roll it, find the corresponding card and set it aside for now. Find cards 64 to 77 and also set them aside. Find cards 78 to 89, shuffle them thoroughly and also set them aside. Take the top three cards from behind the purple divider and set them aside as well. And finally, take all the set aside cards and place them in your global set. To set up a new game, first take the two trays and place them somewhere that everyone can reach them. Then, each player selects one of the adventurers and takes all adventurer cards from behind the corresponding divider. Then players take all cards from the globe deck and separate them according to their type. Reveal all global status cards. One of these cards determines the current month of the game as well as the side of the board that will be used. At this point players must decide whether they'll be playing cooperatively or competitively. If you chose to play competitively then return the harmony card behind the global divider in your card tray. If you chose to play cooperatively do the same for the discord card instead. In this video, I'll be playing competitively. Then create a face-down stack with event cards. Do not shuffle this stack during setup. Take the location cards and place them using the correct side facing upwards in the corresponding location spaces of the board. If there are any local status cards, then place them to the corresponding location like that. Place quest cards next to the board using this side facing upwards. These are quest cards and in the top they depict one of the board locations. Using quest markers, place one of them to each quest location. This is where you must be in order to start one of these quests. Create supplies of dice, skill marks and timer tokens. 
Players take their adventurer's board and also the adventurer's pawn and place them in front of them. Players should never change their gold indicator. If they have item cards, they place them in these three slots. And if they have status cards, companion cards or other quests started, they place them next to their board. Select a player at random to be the starting player who takes the starting player token. Next, players place their prestige token to space zero of the prestige track. Open the book of adventures and use it to randomize the starting day. Input your current month and then the application will show you the day which you must indicate using your day token. Now that the day has been determined, set the timer for any timed effect. One of these timed effects is the Discord card that will indicate the end of the game. This depends on the number of players. In my two-player example, this will be seven days. So I take a pair of timer tokens, place one of them here, and then count seven days from the current Thursday. As a last step, each player places their pawn onto any location card. If there is a quest there, players can pick it up following some more quest rules we'll find out later on. However, if the player is holding the 111 card or has an isolated status, they skip this step completely and keep their pawn next to their play area. The game is now ready to start. At this point, I would like to remind you that if you haven't done already, please subscribe to this channel and hit that bell button so you get notified of all our future videos. It will seriously help our channel grow and enable us to bring more such videos to you. Lands of Galzer is a story-driven game. It has fairly simple gameplay rules, as most of gameplay is guided by this very sophisticated app. In many cases, the app will guide you to find specific cards from your library, in which case you must find them and put them into play. The game is played over a specific number of day rounds. On each day, all players take one turn in a clockwise manner always starting with the same first player. After all players have taken a turn, the day marker is forwarded by one space and play proceeds with the next day. And this continues until you play the last day. A player's turn consists of traveling and then resolving one scene of the game. When you travel, you move your figure up to two times by moving to adjacent spaces. Cities that consist of many cards are regarded to be one space. Cards like this one, which are in effect, can affect your movement points. All spaces on the map have one or even more terrain icons. Very important, at any time during your turn, except on when you resolve a scene, you can take the following two actions any number of times. If during your travel you happen to be on the same space with other adventurers, you can trade with them. When players trade, they can exchange either items and or gold, nothing else, and both players must agree on the exchange. So Boomer could sell items to Isala for any amount, let's say two coins. So both players should also adjust their gold dials. The second action is to pick up a quest. You can pick up any number of quests during your turn. The quest token indicates that there is a quest in that city that players can take. When a player takes a quest, the quest token is set aside and then the player takes the corresponding quest from the notice board. The player places the quest next to their play area and flips it over to its private side. The player now reads the details of the quest but can keep the information secret from other players. Very important, a player can have only up to three active quests. If the player decides to take a fourth one, they must also abandon one other quest. When you abandon a quest, you must perform all abandon effects described in the purple bottom part of the card. Usually, it's to place the card back on the notice board. If the notice board ever has less than three available quests, you take the first quest from your library and add it to the notice board with the public side facing upwards. Then you place a quest token on the city indicated on the new quest card. You don't have to end your movement to take quests. You can take them on the way. After traveling, players must resolve a scene from the Book of Adventures. 
Scenes can be identified by this illustration with a four-digit number and the book. Players can choose the scene they will resolve from various sources. Players can resolve any scene in a city if your figure is located in that city. Perform a scene from a local status card if you are located in the space where the card is attached. Perform a scene on one of your quest cards if you are located in the city depicted on the quest card. Choose a scene from one of your companion cards in the same way. A scene depicted on one of your adventurer status cards or resolve one of the scenes depicted in the topmost event card. Whatever happens, resolving a scene from an event card will always be an option. But if one of your scene options depicts this lightning symbol, then you must perform that specific scene. When you choose the event option, you perform the topmost applicable scene. So in this example, is it Tuesday? No, it's Thursday. Is the player located in a settlement? No. In a grassland? No. In a forest? No. The player is actually located in a hill space, so the scene resolved will be 60. If you choose a scene with such a handshake icon present, other adventurers on the same space may assist you in the scene. They have to agree, of course. We'll talk more about partners in scenes later on. During any scene, there is always the active player who performs it, but also there will be one other player to take the role of the story master. The story master can be the player who sits to the right of the active player. The story master will input the number of the scene, read the scene to all other players and offer the options to the active player. So the story master inputs the number of the selected scene in that box here and presses enter. Alternatively, the scene can be selected from this list. So as not to spoil you any of the story, I will use a demo story scene with an active player that has these assets into their play area. After selecting the scene, the story master starts to read aloud all the story to other players. It is possible that the storyteller will ask the active player if they have specific tags anywhere in their tableau on their cards or their board. Boomer doesn't have such a tag in their tableau, but let's say he did. Having these tags might offer you with more options later in that scene. So now the storyteller continues reading the flavor text and offers the active player with the following options. To either cross the river with a boat, which was a secret option revealed by the player having the boat tag, or explore the area for a bridge, which is a survival test with a hard difficulty, or convince Gabber to offer a free ride, which is a communication skill check of medium difficulty, or pay Gabber for a ride. And to choose that option, the player would have to spend three gold. Performing skill checks is a very important aspect of this game. In order to explain skill checks, let's say that the player selects to explore the area for a bridge and perform a hard survival skill check. Another thing to notice are key verbs that are found in the option of a skill check. For example, explore the area for a bridge. This explore word might be used later on, so keep it in mind. On every skill check, five dice are rolled. These can be the five black neutral dice. However, the player can use their skills to replace the neutral dice with more appropriate ones. Since this is a survival test, the most important skill is survival, as well as the two skills that are adjacent to survival, might and knowledge. This is because their corresponding dice depict more survival results than the neutral dice. For each skill pin you have, you can replace a black die with a die of the corresponding skill color. So the player's best option here is to replace two black dies with two yellow ones and another black die with the green die. The player then rolls all the dice and every survival symbol is a success. During a skill check, players can use their items as well as abilities from other type of cards. For example, the player has a companion that grants an additional success and also lets the player re-roll one of the dice. This, however, works only in knowledge skill checks, so it does not apply. Now, do you remember the explore key verb? 
These verb keywords can be found on brown tags on your item cards or on purple tags. If the verb is found in your brown tags, then you may use the corresponding ability. If you find the verb in one of your purple tags, however, you must use the ability. So now the player will get an additional success, but if the total successes is four or less, the player would have to discard the status card. The player has rolled two successes plus one from the status card, three successes in total, and unfortunately the player will have to discard the status card. Unless stated otherwise, discarded cards return to the library. So we have three successes, however the Story Master will reveal the leftmost applicable result according to the active player's role. So since the player has rolled a knowledge result, the Story Master will read this result to the player. After reading the result, the Story Master continues and then reads the rest of the flavor text. If you see this icon, then the text next to it applies only to the active player. If you see this icon, then the text applies only to partners in this scene. Text next to this icon affects all players. Important, text with greenish background applies only to the Story Master. The Story Master should keep this to themselves and act appropriately. Maybe answer a question like this case. After reading the rest of the flavor text, the active player has found some red earrings. The Story Master will find card number 900 from the library and give it to the adventurer. If you look carefully next to the number, you see this flashing icon that depicts the four different adventurer icons. This means that there are multiple 900 cards and the Story Master must give the one which is applicable to the active adventurer, in this case Boomer. When you reach the end of the scene, the active player's turn is over and play proceeds with the next player. If there are partners in a scene, the active player may use the partner's skills, gold, items, adventurer status cards, the partner's companions, and also any green tag depicted on the partner's play area. Of course, the partner will always have to agree on letting the active player make use of their assets. So, in the scene of our example, the active player has gained a new item from the library. Players have only three slots where they can place their items. If you ever have more than three items, you need to discard items down to three. Discarded items return to the library. In some scenes, players will be visiting markets where they'll be able to buy specific items. This gold value here is the gold you'll need to pay in order to buy the item from such a market. Players can also sell their items to these markets and gain half of the depicted value. Remember, you can never exceed 20 gold. During scenes, players might also gain a new companion. There is no limit to the number of companions that can follow you. Companions might offer you with more scene options or abilities. Players can also gain adventurer status cards. Players can have any number of such cards, but never the same status card twice. If you ever gain a status card you already had, do not gain it. And if that status card had the timed effect, then reset the time effect as if you just gained the card. Status cards also grant players with additional abilities and tags. Finally, during scenes you might encounter new local status cards. These are always attached to a specific location space. This, for example, has to be placed two spaces southwest of Sarwar. You place the card facing upwards so that this little arrow points the location space where the card is attached. These cards usually offer a scene option that can only be taken if the player is visiting this specific location. Many cards of various types can have a timed effect indicated by this symbol here. As soon as these cards enter play, you take a pair of same time tokens, place one on this indication and another one spaces in front of the date token equal to the number indicated on the timed effect. When the date token reaches this space, this specific timed effect will be triggered, which in this case, it will be to discard the companion card. 
Various effects might hasten or delay timed effects. When a timed effect is hastened by X days, you move the corresponding time marker X days nearer the day token. And if it reaches the day token, it is resolved immediately. When you delay a timed effect by X days, you do exactly the opposite. You move the corresponding time token X days away of the day token. After all players in the game have taken a turn, then you forward the day marker by one space and you should also do that in your app. Then you continue with the next day. However, if the day token ever steps on a space with time tokens, then you must find these timed effects and trigger them immediately before continuing with the next day. If there are multiple tokens, resolve them from top to bottom. As soon as you trigger the timed effect of your Discord card or your Harmony card, you resolve the scene depicted on the card which will determine the winner and the game ends. If there are more timed effects later than that point, they are not resolved. At this point, the game concludes by performing all save effects that are depicted anywhere on the play area. For example, this local status card. Or this one, which is depicted on the board of every adventurer, reminding players to take back their triple zero card. The triple zero card is a status card special to each character. This is discarded after use, but due to this save effect, players take it back at the end of every game. After this point, you are ready to either pack the game into the box or set up a new game and continue playing. The rulebook specifies specific process steps depending on what you choose to do next. These are fairly simple steps that I will not be explaining in this video. The rulebook also provides specific steps if you wish to reset the progress of individual adventurers or if you wish to reset the whole game. And that was the video for Lands of Galzer by Snowdale Design. If you like our videos and want to see more, please subscribe to this channel. Until next time, have fun and play more board games. <music>